new validator pipeline and the async validator pipeline, ng messages, and just some some neat stuff. Um, I'm going. I've got some slides, that, but basically you're just looking at code, and I've got a demo up here, which we're going to be building stuff as we go, and. Uh, The demo, we'll start out with just the basic canonical Angular demo uh, for binding. As you can see, we just have, uh, yeah, can yes. Maybe Is that better? Can you see that? A little bit bigger than that yet? Okay, sorry. Um, Is there a lighter theme? Um, I'm sure there is. Uh, am I going to be able to switch it quickly? Probably not. Uh, tools. Ah, I see. Very good. Yeah. That didn't work. Oh, there it went. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it seems to me I have this like exact same thing the last time I did this. Uh, but okay, thank you for that. So basically, all we have is an input. Uh, got ng model on it. It's tied to vm dot model, and uh, binding vm dot model here, and this is all it does. As soon as you type in, it automatically binds to the model. The model's updating. As of 1.2, this was basically all you had. Uh, as soon as you typed into an input, it updated the model. In 1.3, there is a new option out called ng model options, which you use with uh, ng model. And what it does is it controls when that update occurs. Uh, as you can see right here, it's just it's an object, uh, and I'll go over each of the um, options for this object. But you need to put the object directly on like this in JSON, where you can uh, bind it to an object in your model. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but the neatest thing it has it has this update on. So what update on is, is a space separated list of events that you want to update the model on. If you want to use whatever the default model is, you just type in default. If you don't want the model to ever update, unless uh, you're doing, if you want to like do some stuff, write a special directive and you only want the model to update when you specifically tell it to, you just put an invalid name there like none or something like that. So the way this will work is we can come in here and we can say ng model options equals, oh, I do, better, okay, so update on blur. So what's going to happen now? Refresh this. Uh, as I type in here, nothing's going to happen until I blur. So that's pretty simple. Uh, but I think that's pretty powerful. It, it works really good if you're uh, if you need to go talk to a backend when your model updates. That way, you're not making a call every time you type something. Uh, along with that thread of calling a back in, they have debounce now. And what this does, is, well, you guys all know what debounce is. Um, it's basically the delay that's going to happen before the update occurs. So if we come back, we're just going to put this back to default. And we're going to say debounce. Uh, I think that's three seconds. Oh. 
This is why I should not do live demos. B O U. There. Very good. Okay. Sorry about that. So now, when I type, it's going to wait till I'm done typing for three seconds. So, it works like that. So, what you can do also is say, right now, if I type something, let's wait till it's, let's say, update, and I do a blur. I, you would expect that to update right away, but it's not. It's still doing the bounce. So what you can do is the bounce can be an object, too. What you can say is default 3000 and blur 0. So what I'm saying now is that when the default event occurs to bounce that by three seconds but when you blur to bounce it by zero seconds the other thing that you have to do is if I did this just right now it won't work you also uh, everything you put in the in here also has to be in here for whatever reason I, it makes sense I, it kind of uh, messed me up for a while, so now we can go uh, binding. As soon as I click away, it updates. So I think that's pretty useful. Um, next thing they had on here, uh, these next three things I'm going to go over pretty quickly uh, because I don't find them to be incredibly useful. Uh, but uh, they have this allow invalid and what happens is if you have some validators on your um, on your input and in 1.2 the default behavior is if your validators don't pass the model is undefined so what you can do here is if you have allow invalid is to true you can have a, your model, it will still be invalid, but your model will still update invalid values. So what we could do, um, let's just do this. Let's go allow invalid. We'll start out with false. Ah, yeah. G max length equals five. Oops. Okay. So what happens now? If I type in something longer than five, you can see it's just undefined. If I set this to true, Even though this is invalid right now, it's still binding to it. I'm not real sure why you would use that. Um, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, so that's there. Um, the other thing on there was this getter and setter. Another thing which I'm. I haven't really figured out how we would use this. I was hoping someone here could tell me. But what this does is you can bind the model to a function. So if we go getter setter is true. And I've got a, uh, you guys probably want this bigger, don't you? Is that big enough? Can everyone see that? All right. right now I got this hooked up to this demo controller. Um, I'm just going to say, it's just a convention I like to use, or say, oops, this dot, uh, bind to me, equals a function, and value, and we can 
say return angular is defined value if that's true so if a value was passed in stop model equals value otherwise return the stop model okay so does that make sense to everyone so far what I'm doing here okay so now if I come back over here I can set my model what did I call that bind to me yeah bind to me bind to me and what did I call that other one uh, yeah it's just a model okay so if I've done everything right and I feel like I haven't here for some reason okay so now what this is doing is it is running that function it is passing whatever you type in here into that function and that is uh, running it as a getter or a setter so when it gets the value it's running the function if I were to turn this off it's just the, the function that runs there so is there any questions about that all right the last option for ng model options is this uh, time zone and I didn't plan on doing a demo uh, for this one but all that does is if you have it allows you to set the time zone for a date time input uh, right now the default is always just whatever the browser's current time zone is um, so it just gives you a little bit more control over that the only thing that's supported right now is UTC um, they'll expand expand that in the future but so that's it for ng model options okay uh, the next thing that was cool is I think this commit view value is actually not a 1.3 uh, thing but it's uh, uh, it's actually useful now <laughs> I don't think it was that useful before so what we have now is this rollback view value and this commit view value is what angular does if you're using the um, ng model options this gives you the option to roll something back if, does that kind of make sense so like for instance now let's say let's put this back to update on uh, blur I'm gonna move max length We're buying this back to model. So what happens is when I'm here, if I type in something right here, uh, I have no way now of, if I've changed that, I have no way of getting that value that was in there back. As soon as I hit blur, uh, it's going to run that. So I can type happy test. I can hit escape nothing's happening uh, so what I did just for uh, demo purposes here is I created this directive it's DEA awesome model directive um, because I'm not very creative with names uh, and what it does here is it's just I'm restricting it to an attribute I'm saying require ng model that way I can get a hold of the ng model controller and then uh, the element I'm just binding to key up I say if the key code equals 13 um, which is enter uh, commit that view value uh, if it equals 27 roll it back so it just gives you a little bit more bind. for some reason uh, when you run commit view value you have to wrap that in scope dot apply but you don't have to do it in scope dot apply if you run rollback view value I, I don't know why uh, but uh, this works and I was going to try to dig through and figure it out but I didn't have time so uh, 
If you guys know why, feel free to hit me up on G Plus or something and tell me. So, I have this DEA Awesome Model Directive. Let's go back over here and we'll add this directive here. Oops. If I can learn to type. Okay. All right. So if I refresh this, I can get this. When I escape, I go right back. The other thing that this allows me to do, uh, I showed you the enter key. I think that was one thing that was kind of missing from um, NG model options was you can have different, you can update on different events, but they don't really have a way to say uh, when the enter key is pressed, update that. So uh, that directive that I wrote, now I can just write uh, binding. As soon as I hit enter, it goes ahead and updates the view value. Now, uh, one thing I think is kind of strange, and I'm not sure, I didn't do as much research on it as I should have. Um, Find it. But this commit view value, I think you can make that commit invalid uh, view model. So like if it doesn't necessarily have to have passed your validators or something, you can make it be something that maybe it shouldn't be. So that's just something to look out for. Um, but the thing is, is when I did some reading, I read one place, I think it was like that Matthias, the Year of Moo guy. It said it wouldn't do that, and I read someplace else that said it would, and um, my testing kind of showed that it would, so uh, maybe I was doing something wrong, though. Who knows? So that's a rollback view value and commit view values. Anybody got any questions about those? Quiet crowd today. No, that's, that's cool, because I have a directive right now that does exactly that. that, would, that would oh, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll post these slides. You can, I'm sure you'll have a hard time remembering that six lines of code I got there. <laughs> right, exactly. And then it starts over every time the event fires, obviously. Right. Cool? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. Okay, uh, validation. Uh, I guess before, I wasn't even aware of this, and um, Angular 1.2, you did not get validators for all HTML validation attributes, like uh, the min and the max, I guess. Oh, you had to actually use ng min or ng max. Uh, in 1.3, all of these right here are supported out of the box. You don't have to put an ng attribute on it. It automatically uh, put a validator for all of these and also for the input types. I, I know several of them worked in 1.2, but I guess they have full support for it now. Will that fight with the built-in validation that your browser does? Uh, yeah, that's why in a form you always need to put this uh, no validate right there. If you don't put that no validate on, you're going to have problems. Yeah. Uh, another lesson I found out the hard way. Um, any questions about that? All right. Uh, is anyone written in validation um, directives in 1.2? Uh, what you used to have to do is you would like run you basically on the ng model you'd put set invalid or set valid and uh, you would run into a lot of problems if you had validators that had to fire one after the other and you also had kind of problems uh, they'd fight with parsers um, sometimes 
So what they have now is they've changed this all around. Now, now they have the concept of a pipeline. If you're, if you've worked, uh, most of the other things in um, Angular work this way. I know, like uh, uh, for Jesus, uh, my words are leaving me right now. Um, the HTTP stuff. Um, that service you can uh, hook in there and put um, after things to run after request and before request and stuff like that. It's all basically the same sort of pipeline thing. Uh, what I have here is a standard validator. And all it is is a regular directive that takes the ng model controller. So the ng model controller now has this validator's uh, property on it. And this validator's property, you just set uh, functions on it. So standard validator, that is going to be the name of the error. Whatever name you put there is going to be the name of the, hour, the error on the um, error object. Is everyone kind of familiar with how that whole error object works? OK. Yeah, I was just saying yeah. that. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, yeah. Let's just do this. So, my form. Uh, what's the name of this? My input. Were those the interceptors you're talking about? Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Sorry. Right. My input. Dot error. Oops. So let's put a. Um, I'm going to take my awesome directive off here. I'm just going to say this is required. I don't need to have anything. Um, ng max. Yeah. Uh, we'll say this has a max length of 10 and an ng min length of five. So I've got three validators on here right now. I have a required validator, a max length validator, and a min length validator. What I'm doing here is I'm just outputting this error object so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Now you can see required uh, is true. That means I have an error there. Once I start typing, um, you know what, let me take, yeah, that way I don't have to keep, okay, required is true, um, yeah, I should be able to, better, alright, hey, <laughs> so, Required, I have an error now because that validator failed. Min length, uh, I have the error there. Now, my model's updated because it's valid. I have no errors. And now my max length validator has failed. So that error object just basically takes, it says, if whatever um, validator fails, take that name and set it to true. Okay? So. Yeah, this, this name right here is what's going to get set. Um, and all it is is a function that returns true or false. If it's true, it throws an error. If it's false, it doesn't. Uh, I think that's really cool. It's, it's going to save a lot of time for me anyway. Um, the other thing with this that's different now from 1.2 is all of your parsers actually run before your validators and all your format formatters uh, run separately. I can't remember if they run before or after, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, the reason I kind of bring that up is, you know how you have that allow invalid, you can set to true. Um, if your parser doesn't pass, it never makes it to the validator, so you never actually 
even though you have allow and valid true, it will not update the, the model input. So that's why that's kind of important. Also, um, if you, do you guys use Angular UI at all? Uh, their date control stopped working when 1.3 came out because of this problem. Um, yeah, because of the way the parsers and the formatters, they run in a different order now. Um, as far as I, I don't even know if they're fixed yet, uh, but uh, <laughs> if anyone's using them, something to think about. Okay, so uh, this is my standard validator, and all I'm saying, hey, is you have to have the word standard here to be valid. So this is DEA standard validator. I'm going to take these validators off. We'll see. Okay, so now if we see this. I'm going to bump this down just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, there. They won't still see that, I hope. Okay, so now because my validator is false, standard validator, this is not equal standard. As soon as I, can, I make it standard, that error goes away. So um, that's the validator pipeline. I thought it was really cool. But even more cool than that, it, it, did, have you guys tried to write async validators in 1.2? Uh, what can happen with the async validator is because you just wrote uh, something, your validator fires, it goes off and um, tries to get some information on the back end. The thing is, is you're, you have to set the model either the valid or invalid before that comes back. So it gets kind of tricky and if you don't do it right you can there are situations where the user can submit the form while it's invalid. Um, so what they have now is the async validator pipeline. It works just like the validator pipeline except that now it returns uh, anything you put here has to return a promise. And if the promise resolves, it is valid. If it's rejected, it's false. So uh, for some reason, I thought you could do resolve. If you resolved it with a, with a Boolean of false, I thought it should reject it, but it won't. You actually have to do resolve or reject. It, it does pay no attention to what you do it with. Yeah. yeah. Hey, when you Validator pipeline you were talking about before. Uh, There's one slide back. Yeah. Um, you were saying that you thought this was really cool. How are you doing this before? What's the what's use case that you were using for this particular scenario? Or um, I'm just curious if you could. I think I've, I've done a lot of different things. Like uh, I was doing a, uh, uh, a power lifting site and I would have stuff um, where you had to enter like certain coefficients, they would have to be, uh, so range or yeah, okay. within particular ranges and stuff, and that would be different for the person that was lifting. Uh, okay. So I couldn't just use like a min max thing, okay, okay, uh, okay. stuff like that. Okay. Uh, another thing I did, well, I wrote an async validator for a, uh, I had a form where people had to enter their address, and I wanted to. I was using uh, Google Maps to verify it was a valid street address. And so, um, you know, I'd have to run off, make a request to Google, say, hey, is this address valid or whatever. So whatever. So, okay. So the async validators. And this is also real good if you want to check if usernames already exist. You know, stuff like that. Uh, Oh, one thing to know about async validators is these will not run until all your regular validators pass. So if you have any non-async validator that's returning false, these don't even get run. It doesn't even try. Uh, so as you can see, it's just ng model controller, async validators. I'm just calling this async validator because it I don't have any imagination. Um, 
and you pass the, they will pass in whatever value is on the model. I'm just setting up a defer uh, and I'm doing a timeout because I didn't want to mess with going to back in or whatever. Uh, when the timeout ends, if the value entered is async, I resolve it, otherwise I reject it. I was saying, turn, uh, returning the promise here. So obviously this one isn't particularly uh, useful, but it shows you how it works. So let's demo this. What is it? Uh, DA async folder. How did that happen? Okay. So now what happens is if I type in something, it's actually going to wait three seconds. And then I have that, that error. What if I type in async? Okay. So uh, the other thing that you're probably wondering is how do I know when uh, my async validator is running? Uh, because what happens now is it used to be uh, on your form you have the valid and invalid properties dollar valid, dollar invalid. Uh, the only values that they could be was true or false. Now they're true, false, or undefined. So while, um, let's just make this valid. So if we go here, um, so the valid is false. You notice once I start typing, it goes away because it's, it's actually undefined. Uh, the other thing it will do is you have a pending property. Um, and actually, pending isn't true or false. It's just they just put the property on there. So, uh, yeah, uh, like let's put... Uh, I'll do it like this, uh, ng show equals my form dot my input dot pending, okay? Yeah, that's what it is. So, um, so you can see it's actually validating at the Um, so that, that's how that pending thing works. You can see it's pending. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's also supposed to, it says in the documentation that it puts that pending value on the form and it's supposed to put it on the model, but I never could make that work. I'm not sure how they're doing that. Uh, no, I couldn't. Like, I'm, they were saying, like, they're going to add some property to vm.model. I, I don't know how vm.model is a string, so I don't know how they would do that. So I guess maybe if you bind to some sort of object or something, uh, they'll put that pending property on the object that you're binding to. one on my form there so that you know if any of the inputs are pending? And this is the same thing with, with validations. So it, it puts a valid property on the, the model itself, and it also rolls up to the form. So if anything yeah. in the form is about the form itself. But you could call in there instead of my form dot my input pending. Could you call my form dot just my form dot pending? Is that? Uh, let's find out. I'm not sure. Uh, apparently so. so yep. I'm assuming if you had more than one, then that's why you could tell it all returned successfully. Right. <laughs> so that's the async validator. Any more questions about that? I don't know how am I doing on time. Oh, I got plenty of time. Um, 
one more thing to go over, which I thought was actually pretty cool. It's actually just kind of some sugar. Um, and that's NG Messages. Has anyone seen this? Yes. <laughs> I, I thought it was awesome. Uh, so what NG Messages does is it's, you, you've got two directives. You've got NG Messages and NG Message. And what this does is you pass in an object map. It works just the same way as, uh, is it NG Class? Is that right? Or NG Style? Whatever it is. Yeah, so it, it, it's, right now it works really well with the error object because it's just, if you have this NG message is hooked up to required. Therefore, if this object has a uh, object that's named required and its value is true, this is going to show. Okay? So, uh, I think this is kind of easier uh, if we, we just look at a demo. So, let's go div uh, ng messages equals my form dot my input dot error. Okay, and we're going to come up here and we're going to put our other, uh, just our required uh, ng max length NG. Wow. So you guys know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not a horrible typer. I'm just not used to typing on my laptop. Um, okay. So now, you can come in here and go div NG message required. and div ng message uh, length I'm too long uh, you know what just for the fun of it we'll put the min length in there My thumb keeps on hitting the, uh, uh, the mouse pad. Okay. I'm too short. Where at? The input itself and the validation. Oh, no, I did not. Good call. Thank you. Okay, so right now I'm required, too short, I'm too long. So uh, the other thing this does is it, um, you can go out and read the documentation. Um, I don't want to get into it a lot, but it does kind of figure out, it's kind of smart about figuring out, I don't want to show too short and required. I just need to show required. You know what I mean? It'll go through and uh, it kind of does some sort of logic to say, I only need to show this one, even though you have more than one going on. That in itself is useful, I think, uh, but it's not incredibly useful. What would be really cool is if we could um, take those NG messages and standardize all of our messages across... Uh, across your application, right? So what you can do is let's make another script tag down here. And I'm just using the uh, I, I'm just putting something into template cache right now. There's a hundred different ways to do it. I'm just doing it this way because it's easy. Uh, type, what is it? Um, ng slash template, is that right? 
something like that. CMO. Yeah. Oops. And I'm going to take these. Okay, and I'm going to put them down there. And then in my ng messages, I'm going to say ng messages include equals errors or oh, error.html. Okay. Now if I've done this right, uh, and I did not. You know what? I've actually, I did it over here. Just text slash ng template. Okay. Oh. All right. I'm glad one of us can read. Okay. So, all right. I'm required now. Uh. Now we can um share them across everything. Now, your next question is probably, what if I want a special message just for this input? Um, and that's real easy. What you can do is put your ng message inside here, required custom, and that will automatically override uh, what's in your master list. So I thought that was really cool to, uh, um, it gets rid of all that crazy HTML you got to write where it's if this error, if that error, all the tons of ng hides and shows and all that kind of crap. So uh, that's ng messages. Uh, one more thing. I didn't really know where to put this in the presentation. But there is also this uh, touched attribute in uh, 1.3 now. And I'll show you how touched works. We're just going to come up here and we're going to change this to touched. And you see right now it's false. As soon as I give that focus and go away, it's true. So, um, what you can do with that is if you don't want this I'm required message to show until after they've done something, you can just come in here and put an ng show equals my form dot my input dot touched. Okay. If I did it right. Now it doesn't show up until you get focus and you lose it. So, uh, that's ng messages, and that's all I had. Hopefully, you guys still got time to eat your lunch. Um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>